Some subtle sounds of a nice common guitar. Open us in to this new video, episode 2, everyone. We're back with more of our life. Figured it's been a hot minute since we did episode 1, so we'll jump into episode number 2. Because I figured why not. And, and I gotta remember how to play the game. This is how you feel towards code for its step and change that in steps. Okay. Right now I'd say we're a little bit nervous and different around him. Eh. To me, I'd be nervous, but I'd be fond of him. Or would I be more? I'll be... See, when I met a first friend, my very first friend at my young age, um, I was actually kind of relaxed around him. I didn't know what I thought about him, though. I didn't know how I felt about him, but he was really cool. So I was always relaxed at the start. So I'm going to go with that. That's about how I actually would have been. Yeah, yeah, sure. Early in the next morning, you were poking at your food, eating it slowly. About normal. Your sister Lizzie had run out earlier to go play, but you stayed put. Today, just like your moms had promised, Cove was coming over to hang out. Mom! Which one's mom, which one's mommy? Th there's a difference, I gotta remember. <laughs> Excited to see your new friend again, Atlas? Yeah, maybe we can become friends. Okay. With that said, are you done with your breakfast? Yeah, I'm done. With all that expatriation at eight years old can muster. <laughs> ah, looked at your empty cereal bowl, then at your mom. Okay. Okay, attitude kid. We see. This is mommy. Okay. Hi, mommy. Hi. Right. How's it going? Good job. He should be here soon. Clean up began, and then, on cue, there was a knock. It was hesitant, like the person wasn't sure if they were in the right place. Still loud, though. So one of those, like, um... Something subtle. We need to get a more obvious doorbell. I know, I know. Atlas, could you get it? His mom said, so you wandered over to the door. Hey, morning, family. Thanks for having us. Wait, that's that, right, morning. Right, right, morning. Mr. Holden, as your moms have called him, and his son were here. Cove looked different in the bright light of your living room and when he wasn't crying. Yeah, he looks... Mm, looks about the same like last time. With his dad standing in front of him and mom and mommy behind you, you and Cove looked at each other. You studied Cove's apathetically. This was the parents' plan, not yours. <laughs> yes, because the parents plan a lot of stuff and you're sitting there going, Crap, what do I do about it? Not seeming any more excited than you were, he just stared back. Do you want to go play in your room, Atlas? Sure, yeah, I'd go play in my room. Technically, I never really did that. I wasn't really a stay-at-home kid, even at a young age. I was always wild out in the wilderness doing my own thing. I really explored the wilderness of the forest because I lived near some trees. So it was kind of nice. Come on, it's upstairs. Okay. Aw, <coughs> oh, Cove. So sweet. Take care. Let's know if you need anything, you two. Have fun. <laughs> I, I love the dad. The dad's just cool. He's chill. Plus, he's got hair like mine. Ponytail. Which I have it in a ponytail right now. You lead him to your room, puffing out your chest a little bit at the sight of your treasures. There were lots of stuffed animals, a cool bed, a window to look out of. This fucking lucky kid. It was a great room. You hadn't had anyone there to show in a while, but you were really proud of it. He leaned in a little closer to one of your drawings on the wall. I like this. 
I don't. <laughs> okay, you cutting sending prick. I don't like it. Me too. Yeah, I would say me too. Or I would probably, if it was a drawing I made, it would either be me too or thank you. Saying I drew that is kind of a knowing prick. Like, oh, yeah, you know, I just, I drew that. It's nothing. Or the I don't. Eh. Yeah, me too. Okay. Damn, I should have said thank you. Oh, well. You smiled at him. You were proud of that particular piece of art, and you were glad he noticed it. He turned to look around the room a little more, studying the books on your desk and the pictures on the walls. <laughs> Sarah was kind of awkward. At that point, I would just hope he liked your room. You put a lot of effort to making your room as nice as it was. You hope he didn't say anything bad about it. Then his eyes landed on the tiny box of beach things you'd collect tucked away by your door. He took a step towards it before hesitating and pointing at it instead. What's that? Well, it's a hoard of stuff I found on the beach, of course. Now, I know, see, I, I did that growing up. I would collect random stuff I found in the forest, at the beach, even though I didn't like to swim, still don't. I collected stuff. And that's the cool thing about collecting. Collecting stuff is really nice because it gives you memories to remember by. Oh, oh you got any driftwood in there? Dragging the box in the middle of the room, you and Chloe flop down next to it. Um, I think so. Uh, yeah, see? You gesture to a piece at the bottom still covered with specks of sand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I would have been lazy and not cleaned anything off. Nice. Oh, this is a good collection, man. Awesome. You got the sense from the tone of his voice. He wasn't just saying it to be nice or to be a shilo. He actually meant it. A, sh a shilo? Editor, put the description of that on the screen, please. Thank you. That's what that means. <gasps> oh, right. I almost forgot. Sheila is going to be here today. Oh, wait. Is that a person? Sorry, editor. Don't hurt me. Sheila? Lizzie's friend. Or, like, her number one fan, I guess. Mm. Do I have to see him? It should be okay. I mean, he's Lizzie's friend. Not nine, but, you know. Come on, check out my shells some more. Found this one under a bridge of seaweed. <laughs> okay, so on the topic of seaweed. <laughs> Here's a little bit of a trivia for you guys um, to remember in the future. Uh, when I was younger, I did do a lot of fishing before my dad became a complete drunken idiot. And did a lot of stupid stuff. And he used to teach me how to fish. I haven't done it in a while. But at a very young age, I had only had caught two things in my entire life as fishing. One time, I caught a turtle. I kid you not, I caught a literal sna snapping turtle. It was kind of small. It was cool, though. And the other thing, all I got on the end of my hook was a big lump of seaweed. <laughs> I was given a trophy for the kid that had the biggest amount of seaweed to catch. It was funny, okay? Y you guys would have laughed if you saw it, okay? You pulled out the seashell after seashell, explaining where you got each one of them holding up against the light. There were big ones, small ones, pink, purple, orange. Most of them you washed off in the bathroom sink when you bought them home, cleaning off the sand. Oh, so this atlas cleans off his shells. I didn't do that. Over the past few years, you'd even learned some of the scientific names. I'm eight years old. I really wouldn't know anything about scientific names at eight years old. Your voice faltered a little bit, but you kept going as best as you could. I feel like that would be the most legit one. That one or the funny stories to tell. Um, and knowing me... 
with my old friend, I told a lot of stories. Apparently fascinated either by the stories or by the shelves themselves, Cove listened with what looked like the full force of his attention. Awesome. Oh, what did I do? Whoopsie. Wrong thing. Like when you almost got pinched by a hermit crab while searching for shells and after watching him scuttle back into the ocean, you found another empty shell that was almost a twin to his home. Ow, my finger. That would hurt. It was a new experience to be the center of such dedicated focus. Hello, I run a YouTube channel. I'm always the center of focus to some people. I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. I don't do YouTube to be a center of focus. I do it to make you guys happy. Even if it was only directed at the shells. Kids, come downstairs. Come to the living room. You could tell the idea was making him unhappy, but mommy wasn't giving you much of a chance to hang around. Cove hadn't been like this meeting you. You guess it was because he thinks you found each other by accident. Not that a parent made it happy. Mr. Holden must be right that telling Cove his dad was part of the world would be a bad idea. Yeah. Before you knew it, you both been next door downstairs and deposited... In <laughs> deposited. It's a bank, everyone. We've been deposited into the bank. <laughs> no. Ready for Sheila's visit. The two of you sat side by side on the floor of your home's entryway. Uh, I brought the box of shells. I wanted to keep looking at them. Awesome. Yeah, let's do it, man. I'm cool. Bust it open and keep looking while we wait. See, that, that's the kind of kid I would have been. I was like, oh, man, I don't care. I'll get more of them in the future. I'm only eight. Let's look at them, man. That's cooler. You want to look at them. Cove reached in and pulled out a big orange shell. Oh. Like he hadn't spoken out loud yet, he turned to you and held it up, his eyes shining. I think this one is the best of them. <laughs> that one's my favorite too. Uh, Cove smiled at you and you both admired the shell together. It was a giant conch with shades of dark and light orange. If you held it up to your ear, you could practically hear the ocean. Editor, throw on a shell that looks like that. Ooh. XC's gonna hate me. Because you guys should know, I don't edit these. I just do the recording at night. And then before I go to bed or something, she'll probably come in here. Or in the morning, she'll just edit these and get it ready for you guys. All depends on her mood. Seeing as it's only... Um... Let's see. It's only... F I can't give you guys an exact time because then you'd understand it. But it's only about a little bit after noon when I'm recording this on my day off. Uh, she's probably going to get this edited later and probably upload it either Wednesday or Thursday, depending. But she's going to... She hates me sometimes. I, I make her do much so much work, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't hate me, Exie. I found that one last summer when we went to the beach on a picnic. The two of you were still sitting on the floor looking through your collection of beach findings when the doorbell finally rang. Cove jumped, startled by the sound. Since the person had knocked, you figured it was probably Shilo. He knew where to look for that. Lizzie's friend? You nodded, but that didn't seem to make Cove feel better. It was already obvious that Cove didn't hide his feelings well. You could tell what he was thinking right away. This isn't a good idea. He'll be alright. He's here. We can't tell him to leave. He's at our only door and if you go upstairs, he'll find you. Cove glanced around the room. His eyes widened and finally paused on the back of the house. I can go out the window. He was already- No! Don't do that! You don't know what's on the other side of that window. Scrambling to think of something to say, you stepped forward, then paused. Oh, no. Too many options. Oh, no. Um...
Mm, okay, if you're... Oh, boy. That's tough. I'm going to have to choose the idea of saying, all right, let's go. Hurry. They'll see where we're going. He glanced back at you, then nodded. The two of you made your way to the window together. It wasn't much of a distance to clamber out, but by the time you landed gently in the bushes, you looked up to see that Cove was already taking off away from the house. <laughs> he was not that fast, but neither were you. Cove, I'm coming! You ran as fast as your legs would take you, grass whipping around your ankles as you did so. Cautiously, Cove slowed to a halt and looked back at you. Where are you going? I don't know. Somewhere else. I just don't want to see. Oh, man. Damn it. How did he know? Uh, how do I get an annoying kid voice? Yosh Atlas! No, that doesn't work. All right. I can't, do, I can't do an annoying voice. You look back and saw Sheila huffling down the hill after you. The backpack he clenched bouncing all around along the way. What are you doing? Can I come? He must have seen you leaving out the window and followed behind. Hi. Oh. He's more annoying than I imagined. Oh, hi. Are you Cove? That sounds... That, that, that's his voice. Hi. Are you Cove? Dude, you don't belong, dude. You really should have just stayed at the house. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, why is this dude trying to impersonate John Wick? Are you like John Wick or something, Cove? Are you secretly John Wick as a kid? I'm Silo. Okay. Yep. Are we going back? Are we going to play outside? Silo's eyes move between you and Cove and smile remains strong on his face. It got a tiny frown from Cove in response. You were just grateful he hadn't asked why you had been running away. Inside, we left the box on the floor. Right, my shells and stuff. We have to make sure they're okay. 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 With Shiloh trailing behind you and Cove heading back towards the house. Of course. The plan for the afternoon, at least, as far as you were concerned, was to sit and look at the beach things some more. You weren't really in the mood to do much of anything. Hey, check out this scallop shell I found. Pretty cool, right? It's a pretty color. Kind of like my cast. The beautiful glittering pink did look a bit like the wrap around his arm. Pink is a nice color. Okay. Oh? Is it your favorite? Not really. What is? Maybe green or blue. Might be yellow. Oh, those are all cool. Oh my god. I'm gonna make this kid annoying, aren't I? I guess. I guess. Not sure how to do it the sudden with the suddenly more awkward silence. You look like I like those colors too. Awesome. Like usual, it didn't take long for Silo to get fidgety. Lizzie was his favorite. Without her around, Silo didn't seem to know what to do with himself. I don't know how to say his name, okay? Exy's probably gonna get very mad at me because it's her favorite game and I'm probably saying his name wrong. But I honestly find the kid annoying. <gasps> like, seriously. We've all had that annoying kid to deal with some at some point. Like, I'm sure you guys have to deal with it as much as I did at one point too. And Cove wasn't like your sister. He wasn't that much like you either. Is Lizzie coming back? I don't know. Aww. Aww. Where'd she go? I think she's at the beach. Probably. Is she playing at her park? Cove's eyes lit up at the mention of the park. Then he looks towards you. There's a park? Yeah, but it's old. Can you show me? I want to go. He started getting up before you had even answered, and Shilo jumped up beside some excitement. Really? You do too? Right, Alice? 
The park is fun! The park is pretty great. Yeah. yeah! It's right at the beach, so there's a lot of fun stuff to do and a lot of sand. It has a jungle gym and a bunch of swings. Sounds like it'd be fun. So are we gonna go find Lizzie? I don't know. Never really wanted to see her. I just want to check the park out. Adrift without any direction, Sheila finally turned to you. <sighs> okay, yeah, sure. He perked up. Both boys wanted to go. It was only fair. After getting permission from your moms, the three of you were ready to go head out. It was a short walk to the park. Lizzie had convinced your moms that it was so short she could always be allowed to walk there by herself. When you found her, she was hanging on the jungle gym, swinging back and forth. Hi, Lizzie. Her face lit up when she saw you, her big brown eyes going wide. Atlas! Sheila! Hi! God damn it. She dropped to the ground and landed with a soft thud in the sand. In a split second, Sheila had abandoned you two and scrambled over to stand by her. You were used to being left out when it was just the three of you, but now Cove was here. You weren't sure if it was an improvement. Who's that? Right, this is the mega bitch. The mega bitch. Right. I forgot. Oh no. Why is there always a mega bitch in every game? Okay. It's Cove, he's new. Oh, I remember. Hi, Cove. Welcome to my park. Nobody ever comes here to play, so this is where we get together. She gestures wildly with her arms as if to present the area to the newcomer. While Lizzie continued talking, you took the chance to kick off your shoes and wiggle your toes through the warm sand. Just... That's not how you spell it. That's nice, but I have an issue with that. You don't say wriggle, you say wiggle. Oh, whatever. Nice, huh? In this neighborhood, I'm the one who comes up with the ideas. You are? Uh -huh. Yeah, I am. Who else could handle the job? This is the oldest. By a lot. My mom said you're Atlas's age. Yeah. Yeah. Thought so. I'm still the only one in this group with double digits. What about other kids? Other kids? There aren't any. We're the only kids here and Shilo is just visiting from other place. Not even tourists really bring their kids here. This is the land of ancients. Be careful that the oldies don't try to steal your youth. Oh. oh. For a second it looked like he might cry again. Don't cry. But something in his eyes shifted and he looked back at Lizzie. What kind of old people? Like moms and dads or grandparents? Grandparents who don't have kids. They hate kids. Why? What have we done? Stop saying like that. You're gonna upset him. You interjected quickly, hoping Cove wouldn't start crying again. He sniffed, his forehead creasing with worry. Lizzie had st was staring at Cove. Lizzie, don't stare at him. Stop being a mega bitch. Cove wasn't even looking at her anymore. He didn't seem to care that she was there. He went into his own head. Silo was part. <laughs> I can't English. Guys, give me a chance, okay? Sheila was the next one to speak, completely unaware of the situation. Um, um, I met Lizzie and Alice in school. You see a ton of kids there once summer's over. Right. I don't want to go to a new school. I don't want summer to end. Sheila looked down to the dirt. He hasn't had much luck striking up conversation with Cove. I like summer vacation too a lot. Is it just me or does he slightly remind me of Deku? 
I think the freckles are throwing me off, but he slightly reminds me of Deku with how cheerful he is and everything. XC, please don't hate me for that. I know Deku is like one of your favorite characters. Please don't get mad at me. All the building tension in the air suddenly vanished when Lizzie laughed. At Sheila's discomfort, at how weird she thought Cove was, at something else entirely. You really didn't know. But she laughed, face scrunched up. Okay. Welcome to Summer Bird Cove. Take a seat, put up your feet, and get used to it. Mega bitch. <sighs> I can do that too. I do that a lot, and it pisses off XC. I get. I piss her off so much, it's not even funny. <laughs> uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Because that's how it'd be sometimes. It's... For the rest of the summer, Cove was always there. You saw him more often than Shilo. And on some days, when she was in a bad mood or busy, you even saw him more than Lizzie. He became a staple of your everyday life. The way the sun and lunch and the beach were. That first summer, you hadn't really been interested in him one way or another. He was kind of a fact of life. Someone you met with because he was there. Of course, that was only the start of things. Oh my god, there are so many choices. Oh, this is going to be a long gameplay. I got to save. I got to save. Yeah. All right. All right. No, 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 no. no. All right. So. Okay, guys. It is going to be, I think I'm going to wrap this episode up here. Short one. I know. XC's going to get mad at me. Probably or probably not. She's going to probably like how I'm going to do this. But. Because I'm seeing so many options. Well, we got 10 options here. I think that's going to be like 10 videos right there alone. Going to separate each thing to do before summer overs into their own little episodes. These are DLCs. I think I bought these for episode one. Go check that out. I'll put the link in the description below for episode number one. Or XE will. Whoever does, I don't know. I think she does all. I, I don't know. Half of the stuff is confusing. But thank you guys so much for staking around for episode two of our life. I want to keep these videos kind of short, only half an hour long, if I can, with editing or no editing. Most of these probably don't have a whole lot of editing into them. But thank you guys so much. And I hope you want to see more of this. I do plan to do more. But until next time, guys, I will see you all later. So stay safe out there. Just keep your friends and stay hydrated, folks, okay? Always stay hydrated. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye-bye!